Well, it's hard to understand and figure out what really is a code and what isn't, because these are all codes that have not been complete since last DTC clear. Uh, eesh. It's like, uh, these don't even make sense. Poor computer came and completed the tests. Hey guys, you're watching GT Sam. I'm Sam, and today, working on the Jaguar again, we're gonna go ahead and replace the spark plugs. Yes, the spark plugs, and I think this might be a key to some of our issues here with some of the misfires going on here. I don't think the spark plugs have ever been changed since the car was actually put together. So they're OEM, they're original, and they're burnt. So I think they need help. So got all eight right here, Iridium, original, NGK. We're ready to do this. So I'm hoping for good results. And it's not actually a bad process here, so I'll give you a little bit of a guidance on how I was doing it as well, but shouldn't be too bad. So let's go to the car and start right now. All right, guys, so to make this process pretty simple, I'll show you kind of the tools I'm using here. So we got a ratchet here. We have a, just an eight millimeter to get the, the bolts off for the actual coil packs. That's simple and easy, no problem there. Four on each side. Then I have my, so actually my socket here for my spark plugs to go over top of them, but also have a little like, swivel head joint because it is too tight down there to really um, have a big extension. So I have a small extension, help out with that if I need it, but then I just like I slide this in first, then I attach I attach this to it, and then I'm able to get it loose. And so that makes the easiest way. And then also just to get them out, I don't have any magnets right now or that or like little little grabbers or anything like that. So I went ahead. I just have long you know nose pliers just to go ahead and just grab them out of there real quick. So no problem with that. So it shouldn't be too bad. Then just have the spark plugs to pop right in there and. We're gonna go ahead and just get started with that. Alright, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling out connectors. One actual coil pack here. I'm gonna keep them in order too, so I know where they're all at. So, there we go. Alright, for the back one, got a nice long big screwdriver just so I can press it and I'm gonna move on here. I'm not really breaking it. Right. Maybe set a stroke of genius, but if I loosen up the bolt and then get the coil pack moved, it's kind of slightly off to the side. I might have a better grip. All right, pro tip: just remove this uh, coil pack first. But that plug is really on there. Cool. Jeez. You sure, that's not the one that's dying. Push it in first. Lined up. Get my extension going. Yeah, pop it on the actual socket that's in there. Click, there we go. And you get this. There. If I can see. Okay, and then it's on. There we go. Boom. That easily. All right, do the rest by hand. It's a little cramped, but I'm surprised that this is working out. Okay, result number one. All right, looks a little oily. Put it on there. That'd be a good indication of what would be going on. Doesn't smell like fuel or anything like that, so it's good, but definitely worn out and gross. So let's keep moving on. Okay, so, guys, so we want to point something out with that. If these European cars and these high performance these eights, at least, definitely at least that. They are hot and they run hard and fast. Like, they need help. And like, this work is going to go out faster than like my Acu TL, the V6, which meant to, it's meant to be just a like cruiser, chill, uh, touring luxury car. 
This is performance touring luxury sport. This is intense. This is a supercharger. This is a war. Same with turbos. So the spark plugs need to be changed probably more often than like 100,000 miles, definitely. So you're looking at like 60,000 probably at that point because these are high performance. There's no getting around that. So you need to take care of your car. And so that's why they look so charred and black. And I think that's why they're not looking good as well. So let's check the other side now. Okay, this looks a little more interesting. So we've got some stuff in the way here. Probably good ideas to kind of go off to the side. So a very small bolt in the back here. And we've got a, probably like a six. Yeah, it's a seven. So number two on this side here, pretty beat up, let's say. All right, there it is. Nice and dark and scorched. All right guys, the results are in. This is from the passenger side. These are from the driver's side. And looking at the R right there, uh, these might be some kind of different model of some sort. You know, mine up here are the IRs, Iridion, they're definitely OEM. So I don't know what these are. I'll have to look into them more, but we're ready to install these bad boys. I guess what I found out to be kind of useful here is just like, have yeah, a setup like this. You drop this part in first, and you have the extension, then you have your ratchet. So even though it's really cold out here and I have my hood up and look ridiculous, that's okay. Because we're gonna start this because I got the new spark plugs in there and we put all the air boxes back together and we got the fresh oil and the filter in there too. So I'm hoping this is gonna be good results. Now, I wanna go over a few things with you as well. I did some digging last night and I found out that the spark plugs I bought, let's just say they're $13.50 a piece, NGK Iridiums. And they're the high, like some of the highest quality you can ever buy. What were in here before? You're not gonna believe this. Copper NGK $3 spark plugs. Yes, $3 ones, some of the cheapest you could buy, generic ones. My mind was blown, because I believe that these things are just toasted and they were causing this car to just behave awful and just have really bad noises. It could have caused some damage along the way, hopefully not. Hopefully kind of reverse this. These new spark plugs hopefully are the key to success here on this part here. So. I'm excited, and so we can give it the best shot we can. Hope for the best. But let me show you what the spark plugs look like. What we have here is this one. So it's the, we got the NGKR. So that means <clears throat> they were just the cheapo copper kind of things. And uh, they're pretty, pretty toasty. All right, guys, so here we go. This is the first startup since I got it up the hill. And we got everything changed that we need to, so. See what kind of results we get, good or bad. We're about to find out. Battery's connected, everything's booting up. All right, this is it. All right. Codes. All right. Okay, so obviously this cat is hurting and it likes attacking people apparently. Right now the car barely even stays on or even let alone starts, so definitely a little bit discouraging. 
I went ahead and plugged in my code reader into the car because the codes did pop up every time the engine did stall out and it looks like we got absolutely nowhere because the car can't even get on the road to be able to reset its computer and these codes are all pending so it has no idea what is actually true or what is actually false. I can try and clear them but they all just come back later on anyways. Okay, well, that didn't really fix the problem, it seems like. It may have helped actually with actually the running of the engine with the spark plugs. Not by much. So, we're kind of at the point where we gotta investigate a little more. I think we're gonna take the top off of the uh, supercharger and just take all that off and see what's going on inside there. But I have a suspicion that it might be the fuel injectors. Now, maybe like the fuel injectors, one's clogged, one's two or, one or two are clogged, and like they're not letting all the gas in that need to to work and so that's where we're getting that knock because some of the stuff's not moving and so also there was black smoke that came out of the back of my tailpipes when I started the car apparently so that's interesting that's a clue we gotta use this we gotta run with it and see what we can do next so next time you see me I'll probably be taking apart the supercharger a little bit on top there and taking some of the fuel rails off so that's it for now thank you so much for watching GT Sam I'm Sam and I'll catch you next time